Well, howdy doody YouTube, by you here with Angry Cajun TV, yet again in the Angry Cajun TV studios. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Bayou. I'm a paranormal investigator and owner and operator of BA Paranormal and Research. What that is, you ask? Well, we're a global evidence collection and verification center. It's what we do. And, and I mean global, okay? And we've reached a milestone today, which is really interesting. We have collected 250,000, 250,000 pieces of evidence, verified and cataloged. That's a big deal to me. It may not be to you, but it is to me. Anywho, that being said, I decided to pull some of the reports or stories from our files Make sure it's okay with everyone that's involved and then tell these stories here. Okay. Now I would like to say this just right out the water. These are real events. Okay. These are real events that happen to real people and then may or may not have been investigated. Okay. So I'm going to tell you right now, you've never heard any of these stories, especially this one. Who rock star. Uh, you've never heard any of these stories because well, they're not fake. I'm just trying to say, like, when you hear these crazy, weird stories, oh, I'm a, I'm a whatever, and, and they haunted me. That shit's fake. These are real. I got verification, but I just wanted to make sure I told you. These are real events. Completely real, reported, investigated, and verified, especially this one. All right, let's get to the story or the, the report. Um, I'm just going to read the report, so it may sound funny, coming from an eye perspective, okay? But just... Let me read it. Okay, the title of the report actually says I was R word by a ghost. That's what this says. Okay, I'm just going to read it. And that's just how it is. I'm just going to read it, okay? Okay, I'd, I'd like to start this by saying I've never done anything like this before. So I don't know exactly how to write this. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. I'm a simple college student in a small town with a small college. So when we get a little cooped up, exact words, we go to the bigger city, which is about 20 to 30 miles away. In that city, they have multiple things that, well, young adults like to do. Come on, you know, come on, normal. We decided to take a few days off and stay in this really fancy hotel in downtown, not saying the name of the town, uh, all right. We decided to go there just to get some relief and a break from all the studies that, and while well, I was having some trouble with my boyfriend, I don't know why that was added. That was added. <laughs> then, then, all right. Anyway, I'm going to get past that. Wow. I just, it's just funny how it's written out. I haven't read it in years, really. Well, I read a little bit of it, but. Oh yeah, this hotel is old, very old, has a beautiful restaurant, beautiful architecture, and is way too fanciness for, for us. Exact words, way too fanciness. Me and my two roommates decided to stay there. Yes, it's expensive, but yet it is a blast feeling, <laughs> feeling like the rich and famous. That's, that's what she said. Anyway. We checked in. The lady at the desk was super nice, although a little bit creepy. Granted, it was 1130 at night and most night shift workers are creepy. Girl, come on. Now I'm a night shift worker. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so good. Uh, she gave us our room. There was a total of three of us. So they only had two beds and a roll of bed, which was supposed to be in the room. The room number was 211. We went up to the second floor and found out that room 211 is not on the second floor. It is a suite that's in between. What? All right. It's been a very long time. I, I investigated this. You'll hear the notes in a minute, but like, I don't remember any of that. Oh, no. Yeah, I do. It, it had multiple suites on one floor. So it had like all the suites for the floors on one floor. So they had 211, 311, 411, 511. That's right. I remember that. Okay, let's, let's get back to it. 
The room was large and gorgeous. A little bit odd with a view of a half brick wall and a half city skyline, but nevertheless, we were excited to be there and have a good time. So we all got showered and dressed and <laughs> all beautified. Exact words. Uh, <laughs> hold on, next page. After that, we made our way down to the bar and hung out for a little while. After about two or three drinks, we decided to sing karaoke. And then one of my roommates got carded by the bouncer. Shocker, we're underage. So we just went back to the room. While sitting in the room, we noticed multiple strange things happening. Things would roll off the table, even though the table looked level. There were... Marks in the bed like someone was sitting there. We just we just contributed it to one of the maids sitting there. Come on, pages. I thought these got scanned in better. Anywho. So we continued to party by ourselves in the room using the mini bar. Side note, didn't realize we had to pay for it. Smart. Anyway. <laughs> So as it got later and later, we decided we were going to stay up and we were going to explore the hotel at night at 3 a.m. and make this a spooky adventure just because, well, we kind of got a spooky feeling. Damn kids. Good thing they didn't have a Ouija board. Uh, anywho, uh, so at about 2 a.m., not going to lie to you, we were a little lit up. We decided to walk the halls. We went to the third, the fourth, and the fifth floors, finding it odd to only find three or four doors on each floor. The third floor felt especially weird. It felt as if it was closing in on you as soon as you stepped out the elevator. This literally freaked us all out. So we decided to go back to the room and hide under the blankets. Yes, I know, corny girls. That's literally what it said. I'm not even joking. Okay, so we got back into the room, kind of creeped out and weird, decided to lay down. So we got a little cleaned up and laid down. The, the hide-a-bed thing still hadn't arrived. So we called the front desk, and a, what looked like a 12-year-old girl dressed in a very weird bellhop kind of outfit delivered the fold-a-bed with a weird... All I can say is a weird grin slash limp gave us the creeps way, way more. Kind of like we were going to find spiders in the bed. That's what it says. Anyway, we, we set up everything and we went to sleep. Not long after everyone fell asleep, and the reason I knew they fell asleep was because I can hear both of them snoring like loud gorillas. It says that, no joke. And <laughs> so while they were laying there snoring, I was kind of awake a little, and it felt like someone got in the bed with me. I just chalked it up to maybe the air conditioner or maybe blank got in the bed with me. But when I looked up, I saw both of my friends in their beds. When I turned to the other side, there was an imprint in the bed and the pillow, like someone was laying there. I'm not going to lie, it freaked me out. It kind of felt like somebody was there, but I didn't see anyone, so I just closed my eyes. A few minutes later, probably a lot longer than that, I felt what felt like someone feeling me up. They went under my shirt, or really my nightgown, and started to... She says a lot more. Basically, they touched her, something touched her inappropriately. At the point of which I got pinched on the, you know what that is, the, the nipple. I'm just saying, fuck. At the point that I got pinched on the nipple, I got really freaked out and tried to jump up. When I jumped up, it felt like a very strong set of hands pushed me down. Then it felt like someone licked me. Licked my neck, licked my breasts, licked my stomach and then licked me. 
I'm not going to lie at first, it kind of felt good. But then I realized that this was not right. This had to be a dream. It had to be some kind of crazy thing. So I tried to wake up. I couldn't make a sound. It felt like someone's hand was over my mouth. I just laid there struggling for a few minutes until all of a sudden it felt like it let go. I got up screaming, waking my friends up. We didn't know what to do. So we called the front desk. The lady at the front desk very creepily kind of giggled and said, that's the kind of things that happen in a, in a historic hotel. We thought about leaving. Instead, come on, can you stop? Damn cats. We thought about leaving, but realized that we paid way too much money for this room. So we decided to all pile into one bed, which happened to be the fold bed, and ride out the night and just try to forget about it tomorrow in the city. Well, that didn't happen. We didn't sleep at all. We went out and the next morning, we creepily got into the shower, each one of us with each one of us in the bathroom to watch out for us. I know it sounds really paranoid, but I feel like I got our word by a ghost. Then we kind of went out into the city and had a good time. Kind of forgot about everything that happened. And I mean kind of. When we got back to the hotel, I had a rush of memory of what happened. It literally felt like I was our word. I just, I didn't understand. I didn't know what to do. I talked to the manager at the front desk and the manager at the front desk informed me that in room 211, which used to be the penthouse suite, but one of the penthouse suites before the remodel in 1976, it says. Okay. Multiple people. Okay, I'll, I skip forward. The front desk clerk or the manager told me that there were multiple people that had ended their own life in that room. One of them being a woman that ended her life because her girlfriend broke up with her in the room. We decided that we were going to try to make the last, this second night, and if anything happened, we would just go home. I've already talked to my parents and explained what happened. My dad said, you need to just leave now. Just because you, if you think you're violated, then you were violated. That's right, girls. If you think you were, you were. Anyway, I ignored my dad and listened to my mom and just said, have a good time. It was probably a dream or my weird imagination. It wasn't. Anyway, <laughs> we went down and tried to enter the bar again for the karaoke night but the bouncer remembered us we went back up to the room kind of forgotten what was going on but literally as soon as we got back in the room and i sat on the bed something grabbed me by the hair pulled me down onto the bed and it felt like it sat on my chest my friend st stood there not knowing what to do thinking i was joking as soon as i was able to get up I had red marks on my neck and face and we all, and this is so weird. And then we all freaked out. We decided to leave. I actually left a half of a suitcase's worth of clothes because I was so scared. We left and then we, okay, I, ne I never noticed that before. Anyway, I'm going to fix that. We left. When we got home, they had some weird gibberish in the middle. When we got home, me and my friends never talked about it. The only reason we decided to do this report right now was because my friend blank was actually our word. And it made me feel like I needed to at least tell someone. That's literally the end of the report. Now we have investigation notes. Because we went and investigated this. 
and I'm, I'm just going to tell you, they're, they're real short, so it's not going to be that long. So just hang in there with me, people. All right, investigation notes. Lead investigation notes by you. By you reported on scene on this date at this time, entered room 211, noticed a strong odor of ammonia as well as other things. Through the night, we tested multiple things with no avail. Nothing happened. No spirit box action. No EMF. No anything. Until 2.37 in the morning. At 2.30, I kind of leaned back in the bed. And just kind of went, well, fuck this. Ain't nothing happening. Whatever. Well, when I leaned back into the bed, I kind of dozed off. When I dozed off, I felt someone pull my feet. When that happened, I thought the other investigator there with me was playing a joke on me. He was also asleep. I jumped up, turned the EMF on, turned the recorder on, and asked a question, and nothing happened. The only thing credible that happened was my feet being pulled, and then about an hour and a half later, you could hear and see what looks like someone getting off of the bed. On the other side. I wrote this. I remember this. It was almost like they were sitting there with us the whole time watching. That was crazy. I remember it. I remember it very well. I remember leaning back in the bed after a whole bunch of hours of sitting there with nothing. And feeling like my my feet, my my feet got pulled. I thought it was my other investigator there with me. It was not. Um, I will say what we did get, we did get um, noises of the bed, like squishing up and down on, on, on recording and a weird, what one of my other investigators calls is a banshee scream. Um, But it was really weird because we got that on the third floor and the third floor did feel really weird. I'm just trying to say, anywho. That was the lesbian succubus of room 211. Let me do that better. That was the lesbian succubus of room 211. Anywho, if you like this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And well, if you liked it, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do more. Like I said, I have 250,000 of these. Now, I would have to like get permission for all those, but I got at least a couple more. Let me know if you want to hear more. See you on the flip side. Bye. Yeah. Fucking chair roll. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts. I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong. I won't